For many dog owners, barking can be one of the most frustrating natural dog behaviors that you have to deal with, right? It is very natural that dogs bark. A lot of our dogs bark because they're happy or they bark to let us know there's something going on or they bark to let us know they're scared and they bark for a variety of reasons. But barking can be very, very frustrating, especially if you're a person that does not handle excess sounds well, right? And especially if you're having a hard time telling your puppy to stop barking, please. I know there's a person outside. I know you're scared of that. And I just don't want to hear about it anymore, okay? So for barking, addressing barking, first, we need to know why is your puppy barking? Is your puppy barking because they're scared? Is your puppy barking because they're excited? Is your puppy barking because they are having the greatest time of their life and just need to share it? And a lot of that's going to depend on your dog's breed. So if you have a herding breed, like a Sheltie or a Border Collie or an Australian Shepherd, they're probably gonna be a little more loud than some of our other dogs. And that's okay, that's part of their breed. And that is something that you will have to learn is a part of your dog's breed and learn to manage it rather than completely do away with it. If barking is very frustrating to you and you want no barking, you should be looking for a dog breed that doesn't bark a lot in the first place rather than getting one like a Sheltie that you know is probably gonna bark and then trying to work against those genetics because dogs bark and act differently depending on their genetics. If your dog is excited barking, you can work on helping your dog calm down. So it could be a time where you send your dog to the mat to lay down. It could be a time where you practice deep breathing. It could be a time where they go take a break in their crate rather than being excited and barking. However, if you have a breed that is known for excited barking, this might be something that you have to, to, to work with and, and be okay with as your puppy is excited barking. And maybe if you don't want your puppy excited barking when you're playing in your apartment, then you just don't play with those toys inside your apartment and you take them outside instead. That kind of management is really, really important when we're dealing with barking. It's important, as I'm sure you figured out by now, when dealing with any problem or unwanted behavior. So management might look like taking the toy somewhere else to play instead of in the apartment. Management might also look like taking a decorative window cling that covers your window. It doesn't have to be like the frosted ones. If you don't want that look, there's some really nice like stained glass and nice looking window adhesives and putting those on your window. So you still get light in, but your puppy can't see shapes and stuff as easily outside. It might mean that you play background noise so that your puppy doesn't hear things in the hallway of your apartment or hear the slightest sound in the neighborhood and notice it and bark at it. So if you just have some background noise going on or even like a fan or something like that in the background, they're gonna be less likely to notice the other sounds that are happening. If your puppy is barking because they are excited or scared or something like that, and it is something that they're not going to interact with, right? We just want them to, to be comfortable with, like people walking by the front window. Then we can play a game called look at that. When we're playing look at that, our goal is to teach our dogs to look at the thing that they're worried about or excited about, and then look back at us. And what you're gonna do first is teach your dog a marker cue. So you can use a clicker, which is a little noise making device, or you can just use your voice like, yes, good, whatever kind of marker you want. And you're gonna teach your dog that when they hear that noise, they are going to earn a reward. So it's gonna be like, click, treat, click, treat, click, treat, until your dog sees or hears you click and then looks for that treat expectantly. Same thing if you're gonna use a verbal marker like yes or good. And then what you're gonna do is take that marker and you're gonna start applying it in the situation. So I recommend starting with a neutral object, which you can see in the PDF handout, the look at that PDF handout that is accompanying this video. And something like a book, holding it up, clicking when your dog looks at the book, 
and then feeding a treat. And that'll just help you practice your own mechanics, help your dog understand the basic idea of how the look at that game works before you start using it with other dogs. Once you start using it with other dogs, what you're gonna be doing is clicking or marking the instant your dog looks at another dog. So you're gonna click them for looking at the other dog. So they look and you click right away. And your dog will know that click means I get a treat. So they look at the other dog, they hear the click, and they turn back for the treat. This prevents your dog from going and looking at the other dog, staring at them, and getting worked up about that. Instead, it's a game of look, treat, look, treat. And they don't focus on that because they're just looking at it and looking back at you for treats. So it still says, hey, it's okay to look at things, but I just want you to look and look back, and I'll feed you treats for it. And when you practice that with your dog and they understand that game, it becomes a conversation that you have with your dog. And your dog just says, hey, there's a person. And you say, okay, cool, cool, there's a person. And it's not a dog that feels they need to stare at something and get worked up about it. So that look at that game can be really, really helpful when we are trying to help our dogs bark less.